Hi guys, in this video I will explore the depths of the illumination controls in Phoenix FD. I will be talking about the white section right here in the colors and transparency dialog. Um, I'm using the official Phoenix release version 2.2 from the 8th of May 2014. I will use this simple, simple setup here with burning fire and smoke. Right now in the scene I have only one directional white uh, from 3ds Max. With with the directional white you can uh, get pretty much the same shading in the GPU preview and in the production rendering because the GPU preview treats any whites that you assign here as a directional white relative to the grid's origin. And uh, I have enabled uh, shadows uh, using a V-ray shadow and atmosphere shadows on the uh, directional white. So, uh, if we just uh, render this frame right here. Uh, by the way, I'm using all the default rendering options. I have made no changes to uh, the Phoenix settings or the V-Ray rendering settings. I'm using V-Ray 3. And uh, the result we will get is just basic colors for the fire and the smoke. There is no interaction between the fire and the smoke. And uh, we could even fake this rendering right here if we weren't using both fire and smoke. And just with colorful, sm colorful smoke, if you base it on the temperature and just assign a color gradient so you can get the yellow and uh, the gray here, you could get the same result and even save a little bit of RAM and CPU. So, what uh, what is the conceptual difference between fire and smoke? It is that fire uh, not only has a diffuse component, but it has an emissive component as well. This is what the intensity curve right here does. Because the color of the fire can become bigger than one. It's not just this simple color here, but it's multiplied by this, uh, this curve, and it can become a lot more than one. You can see right here that it's uh, in the range of millions. So... Uh, if we, if you want to get a more realistic, more proper rendering, uh, the best we can do visually is to enable GI with both brute force engines and uh, see the result that we'll get right here. And our rendering is finally finished. Ten minutes later, we get uh, w we got the result right here, so we can analyze it and see what was the difference and the difference is the illumination that the fire has uh, cast on the smoke and on the ground and uh, this is what the fire intensity right here uh, does it's uh, the strength of the light that will be emitted by the fire <coughs> and uh, uh, even though this result is the, the most realistic that we can get I strongly advise against using brute force GI, uh, especially if time is a factor in your work, because the computers these days are just not uh, the monsters that will just calculate brute force GI on a volumetric atmospheric in a blink of an eye. And uh, I advise against this because there is uh, a much faster and simple alternative to this, and uh, that's what I will be talking about until the end of the video. So. Uh, we could fake this effect. Obviously, what what we have right here is is just uh, we need a light source that will cast white on the fire and on the ground the w the same way that the directional white uh, is uh, is illuminating the uh, the smoke right here. So uh, we could just get the simple 3ds Max Omni White, place it inside the fire. I will just disable GI for now and. Um, render and see what, what the result is. Um, but this will, this will do, but only in very simple cases. However, it becomes increasingly difficult to do manually when the fire has a more complex shape than this, when it's animated in time, or when the smoke is thicker, etc. And this is why Phoenix does that automatically for you. So if we enable right here the white uh, checkbox, Phoenix will automatically create several whites where the fire is. So uh, historically that was 
the first thing that Phoenix did about this problem and uh, if right here we change the self-shadowing option to ray trace uh, we will get back in time and get uh, this first effect uh, so we leave everything else as it is and we will start rendering this frame alright and uh, here it is seven minutes later we got this render so um, it's certainly a bit faster than uh, than the brute force GI but uh, it can get uh, a lot more faster, faster than this and also uh, you can see that uh, the, the the white is quite much stronger than than with GI what is the reason for this uh, that happens because right here in the viewport you can see the uh, the additional whites that Phoenix generated around the fire they are represented as blue uh, only white shaped objects uh, so in here in the when you set the self shadowing to ray traced uh, Phoenix just treats these whites as any other omni whites and uh, it just uses their illumination to to uh, to shade itself so the reason for for this bright whiting right here is because the whites are actually sticking out of the fire um, you can control the uh, the uh, the number of whites that Phoenix generates right here from the white count option and uh, if you if you make them uh, a bigger number Phoenix will reduce them in size and uh, they will fit more correctly around the fire uh, this automatic uh, fitting of the whites the automatic finding of their positions is uh, controlled right here from the white placing option currently it's inside and uh, this is a smart uh, placing of whites that uh, finds where the fire is and puts uh <coughs> puts whites automatically there and uh, that's it phoenix automatically calculates their size and their power to uh to to make it uh to try to make it look like uh the result that we got with gi but currently with uh, with uh, so little uh, uh so few whites right here we cannot um, get the same result the whites are sticking out of the fire and uh, there is nothing stopping their illumination from uh, from going further and uh, making the smoke brighter so uh, apart from the white number here you, you have also the additional uh, controls that uh, help you regulate their power and their radius if you're not happy with uh, the result that Phoenix uh, generated automatically also here is the white cutoff parameter that's an optimization parameter and if the white intensity drops below this value right here uh, it's automatically set to zero uh, so you won't have to shade objects that are quite far far away and uh, you can you can always uh, drop this to to zero if you if you'd like and uh, because you might be getting a sharp uh, seizing of, of of white this way and um, uh, this option right here, the, the reduced grid to percent, it does not uh, work with the ray trace self-shadowing. Self here you have the option to emit if not renderable. This is if you uh, if you make the the Phoenix simulator not renderable, it will still emit white if this is checked. Okay, so here you have the subdivision controls with uh, direct illumination, with GI, and uh, with caustics. So. Um, First of all, let's have a look at uh, the other kinds of white placing that Phoenix offers. Uh, apart, of the, apart from the inside placing, you have a simpler version, version of this. Uh, you can always preview it here by clicking Preview Placing. And uh, right here it's not quite obvious what actually happened. So I will increase the white number to 500. Click Preview Placing again. And we'll see that with simple white placing, Phoenix just um, fills uh, this sphere uh, around uh, the the midpoint of the fire, and uh, it generates this sphere of white uh, around it, and that's it. When using the inside placing, it uh, it goes much better than this, and uh, Phoenix puts the whites inside the, of the fire and automatically. Uh, calculates their size and their power but there is uh, a problem with the inside placing 
uh, that might, might arise. So here you can see that uh, uh, the whites now fit the fire much better when their, uh, their number is higher. I will just turn this back to 100. So when using the inside placing, uh, there is one potential problem. Uh, if your smoke is thick or the, the white number is low, an animation rendered with this white placing may flicker. This happens because the white positions are calculated for each new frame and uh, don't follow the arrangement from the previous frame. In case this happens, um, you can change the placement type to the third, uh, the third type right here, to the reduced grid <coughs> white placing. So, if you preview the placing right here, um, you can see that the whites have become even smaller and much more that's because the, the white count parameter right here is, is ignored in this mode and uh, the reduce grid to percent kicks in. By default this is 10% and uh, what this setting does is um, it, uh, it means that basically the grid's resolution is decreased down to 10% of its original uh, number of cells and then each cell that contains fire, in this case temperature, uh, becomes a white. The lower this parameter goes, the less whites will be generated and the bigger their size will be. So you might even go with 1% if you preview it. Here it is, you have bigger whites, they start sticking out of the fire and you might get a brighter illumination. So I will return this back to 10% and uh, just the recommended range for uh, for this setting right here is between 1 and 10%. You, you might even drop it uh, even lower than this because uh, more whites means slower rendering times and uh, you might not always want to, to render like 10 or 100,000 whites because it will certainly be slower. You could also uh, use a grid reduction of 100%, that means no reduction at all. And in this case you get a uh, basically the same result visually as the GI but um, uh, it may even be slower than this because each cell of the original grid that contains fire will become a white an individual white itself so right here with 17 million cells from the en for the entire grid you might even hit 1 million uh, uh, white sources so this is quite quite much and it's it's always better to use a, a more conservative grid reduction right here okay so uh, let's render this with 10% and see the result that we we'll get okay and here it is so 3 minutes 45 seconds down from 7 minutes with uh, the inside white placing and down from 10 minutes with brute force GI so Right here you can see that um, the illumination is not that bright, it's, uh, it's, it's looking much more realistic right now. The whites are still sticking out a little bit, but uh, you can control this or you can always use the power multiplier to even reduce it a bit further if you'd like. And uh, in this mode, if you got any flickering with the inside white placing, uh, you will not get it this time. So can we do even better than this? Yes, we can. Um, we still uh, have got two self-shadowing modes to check out. The first one, uh, you can always uh, disable the self-shadowing. Uh, if you use this mode, uh, the smoke will not block the white and uh, the smoke will become brightly lit by it. And um, here you can start to see the result. And um, in case this is not what you desire, you may also switch... I will cancel this right now. I think you can see what the result is right here. So the farther we get from the smoke, um, the less white there will be. But uh, in this mode, just there is no obstruction for, for the white from the smoke. And uh, it goes as far as it can get. Okay, so um, in case you uh, you would like to see something more like the previous result, you could also use the latest addition to Phoenix FD that was included in version 2.2, the grid-based self-shadowing. 
so I will just hit render immediately and uh, this mode does not use the additional whites on the simulator itself uh, the additional whites only shine on the surrounding geometry uh, while the white is propagated inside the grid using a faster formula so not only that this is faster but it will also eliminate any noise on the smoke if you are using a noisy sampler the limitation of this method is that uh, if you have two or more Phoenix fluids that will uh, they will not illuminate one another uh, if you use uh, if if you want to get this effect, uh, you have to go back to the ray traced self shadowing. Uh, it's more robust in uh, in this case, and uh, and several Phoenix simulators will be able to uh, to illuminate each other because they basically just generate these additional whites and they will act automatically in the smoke. But if you have uh, just one Phoenix simulator, and um, uh, or you. It, if if your case just requires uh, if it doesn't re if your case just doesn't require interaction between um, the simulators, you could use the grid based uh, self illumination, and you can see right here the rendering is already finished at 50 seconds, and you get uh, basically a good self illumination. Also, the GPU preview gets um, this. Uh, self-illumination as well automatically after you render in production render or if you don't want to uh, to wait for the production re rendering uh, so that the GPU uh, preview gets updated you can also force it right here from the preview rollout uh, with the self-illuminate button uh, so um, the grid-based self-shadowing uh, it also uses uses the reduced uh, grid to percent setting, and you can make it work faster if you reduce if you reduce this setting further. Much reduction will generally lose the illumination details, but in a lot of cases this is not noticeable. Right now, using both grid-based self-shadowing and reduced grid white placing, uh, the reduction option right here is used by both of these, and. Um, uh, another thing, there might be cases where you might want to adjust the grid illumination and the additional white strength separately. Uh, I mean the illumination on the the fluid itself and the illumination on the surrounding geometry. So to generally modify both of these, uh, you could um, always use the intensity multiplier right here, and uh, it will. Whoops. It's. It will. Um, uh, work on on both uh, both types of illumination, and uh, you could use the power multiplier to adjust only the additional whites. It will uh, this way the the self illumination will stay this way, so just the additional whites will be made uh, uh, stronger or weaker. Okay, so um, one more thing is that uh, you might uh, also turn the uh, the additional white strength basically off by using a, a very low um, setting right here for the power multiplier and this will eliminate uh, any white that is cast from Phoenix on the surrounding geometry and will leave you just with um, with, with the Phoenix uh, own illumination and uh, this way you, you could get a result like in uh, film effects if you'd like um so here it is you can see it rendering and this way you could save even more rendering time if you intend to um to to render the illumination on the uh, on the scene separately or if you'd like to fake it in some way so here you can see that uh, from 50 seconds we went down to 42 seconds and uh, the more geometry you have around and close to the simulator uh, the slower the rendering will go because uh, each of the additional whites will have to be calculated for the geometry so really in order to uh, to speed up the rendering if you care only for the the shading of the fluid itself you could uh, turn off here the power multiplier and uh, save uh, some or a lot of time well, that was it. I hope you have learned some useful information. I want to thank you for watching and uh, till next time.